Hey, what's happening, everybody? It is Thursday night. Time for another episode of Thrifty Business. I'm your one host, Jason Thrifts. And with me all the way from Vacaville, California, it's my girl, Debs. What's happening? Not much. I was just thinking, oh, this is the former tax day. Because now it's... Oh, yeah, you're right. It is former tax day, at least for this year. Yes, for this year. Thank We're already you. done. We, we were done a while ago. <laughs> we were we were ahead of the game so good to see everybody and uh let's jump right into it now it's time for jay's tiki talk each week i drink a different rum out of a different tiki mug and try and match it up to my guest so our guest tonight is me because hey. debbie's been wanting to do this ask jason anything show for a while and this week wound out perfectly so instead of like trying to match things up i had stacy uh who's right here Hi, hon. Hi, uh, I had Stacey make my favorite drink, and she brought it over. It is a rum barrel and one of our favorite bars, the Foundation Bar in Milwaukee. Oh. So I have a rum barrel in a rum barrel now. You know it's a rum barrel because the mug tells you it is. Oh, oh I like that kind. That's <laughs> Not all mugs are that specific. <laughs> but uh, a lot of rum. And uh, some juices and stuff, but it's yum me. Four ounces of rum, right? Yes. Yeah. So by the time we get to questions, I should be like, "Wee!" <laughs> oh no, we might have to take over, Stacy. <laughs> what are you drinking tonight? Okay. Do you recognize this one? Yeah, double down. Double down because you live in Vegas. So I had Aww. to. Pick one. I had to buy. This is the Frankie's uh, Tiki Room sister bar, but I had my uncle Duck in the fifties. He was a biker. And he, this was him. And so I told Bill, I have to have one of those to remind me of my uncle. And I have, I have a half a hurricane because I didn't want right. to do the whole one. <laughs> yeah, because that's four ounces of rum too. So I was like, man, yeah. you're you're little for four ounces of rum. <laughs> I did a half and a lot of ice. <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to do the the, the, um, the normal segments first. And then we already got 57 questions preloaded with answers and graphics and props and stuff. And then Stacy's here to field any questions coming in from the chat. But don't do any questions now because we won't get to them right now. So save the questions till the second half. So say goodbye to Stacy. Bye, Stacy. And let's get right into it, shall we? Absolutely. And now it's time for our scores of the week. These are the items that you should be on the lookout for when you're out thrifting. Alrighty. Um, a, a jumper, denim jumper. Sold it for $26.99. Sold really quick, too. I think, I paid, I think we got that in the bin, so probably paid... 75 cents or a dollar nice yeah and this betty cracker this is a it's a facsimile i got it at the thrift store the other day they had a half off everything so i paid about 15 we sold it like two days after we listed it for 29.99 it was in really good clean condition so what do you mean facsimile it's not the original it's like like kind of like oh a so they made they made their own yeah. bootleg basically <laughs> yeah they must have yeah there's yeah so they oh yeah cool i didn't even know i didn't know they did that I didn't either until I picked it up and I thought, wow, this looks really new. So, of course, eBay, you know, I and it says facsimile in it. So, yeah. Awesome. Betty Crocker's good. Oops. Uh, there we go. It's a bonanza sale. I haven't been sharing those. Um, Standing Tall, Kids Books. I think they're, I think it's a Mormon uh, publisher. We were in Tennessee and I picked those up for $8. Brought them back to California and sold them pretty quick for thirty three sixty five. They're just little little books. There's actually a cassette tape I think that goes with these, but I only got this much of it. Nice. Yep. And we had this Mario Super Mario hoodie. I thought that thing would sell really quick, so it was around for a while. Um, let's see. I forget what we took the best offer of. I think it was thirty, and we paid two dollars for it. Nice. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Didn't fit my husband or he would have kept it. <laughs> I was going to say, Bill didn't want that hoodie? <laughs> yeah, he was. All right, so when you're in the record store, we look for records, we look for CDs, we look for cassettes, and we look for books. And we look for specific books, what's called guitar tabs. So these are the guitar parts to the Anthrax album, Persistence of Time. As you can see, I spent five whole dollars on it, and it sold for $35 on Amazon. Nice, nice. I'm always looking for those. Now, this was a mug made by Brad Parker, a.k.a. Tiki Shark, and he didn't like how the glaze came out, and uh, he sold it. He sold them for, I think, $8, $8 I think, plus shipping. 
And I got a couple and I'm like, eh, they're okay. So I threw one up there today. Boom, $59. Nice. I'm like, all right, cool. I, I like uh, I like mistakes that make me money. Yeah, I like the color. All right. We've talked about this many, many times in the in the past. Some trash is worth money. Wow. This is just the empty canister that a bottle of Appleton Estate 21-year-old rum came in. Now, the rum costs, uh, what's that 21 cost? Like 300, 400 bucks. Uh, it's really good. I have a bottle, uh, but someone wanted the empty container uh, internationally too for forty two dollars plus. It was twenty five dollars shipping. Wow, that's a nice trash. I could see trash. So <laughs> trash. Don't, don't take all your trash is worth money, but always give your trash a, a second glance because once you drink this bottle of rum, most people be like, I don't need the canister anymore. Yeah, forty two bucks. And take care of your your containers. <laughs> <Keep Yeah. them. laughs> All right, thrift of this kick-ass Cabo Wabo work shirt. Uh, if you don't know who, who owns Cabo Wabo, Debbie, tell everybody. Sammy Hagar. Very good. Yay. So this is the Cabo Wabo Cantina in Las Vegas. We all went to the <laughs> actual original Cabo Wabo in Cabo. And uh, I picked this up at uh, Sabres for like five, six bucks and sold for $100 rather quick. Wow. And no one had a work shirt up. so. The uh, t-shirts were going anywhere from like 10 to, to 40 bucks to pay on the t-shirt. I'm like, I think hundred bucks sounds right. Plus I had best offer. Nope. Took it for a hundred bucks. Nice. Somebody lost their work shirt. So they needed to replace it. Yeah. All right. So that was our normal stuff. And now it's time for our CD and cassette scores of the week. And as always, we start with flipping cassettes. <laughs> All right, so uh, DMX, his crew, his rap crew were called the Rough Riders, and most people know only one person, the Rough Riders. Her name is Eve, and she's also an actress. She was in the barbershop movies, uh, but but DMX passed away last week. I had this Rough Riders cassette on Amazon for like two years, and he passed away. I quickly moved it over to eBay. It sold directly on eBay Australia in like an hour of being listed, and now it's on its way to Australia. That $30 Australian is about... 22 American. Nice. Smart. And I know people clown on Limp Biscuit, but we we like Limp Biscuit. We saw him in concert many times back in their heyday. And look at that. Used cassette for $19. Nice. I did pay uh five bucks at uh, a record store here in town for that one. And now we go from flipping cassettes to flipping CDs. All right, I'm gonna quiz you now, Deb. Okay, now I'm going to show five CDs, and I'm only showing five because two kind of go together. So I okay. sold this Paul Abdul Rush Rush for $15 as a promo. Okay. And this Paul Abdul, come on, there we go, uh, Vibology for $51. Again, just a promo. Wow. Now, why do you think, do you know why two Paul Abdul CDs sold this week? Yeah, because she's a judge on American Idol because Luke Bryan has COVID. So Ding, sure. that's right. I had both these CDs listed for six, seven, eight months. And guess what? She had a fill in on American Idol Monday night. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, I sold two Paula CDs. Coincidence? <laughs> Probably not. Oh, no. No, everybody was excited to see her. I mean, we feel bad for Luke, but it was nice to have her back on. And uh, I paid 75 cents each for these CDs. That's crazy. 50 bucks. Wow. All right. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hide this for a second. This is the band Blur. Most people know the band Blur from a thing, a song called Song 2. You might like, I never heard of that. Just listen to it later. You, you'll have heard of it. Okay. Uh, uh, and uh, Boys Who Like Girls, that's them, right? Yeah, that's Song 2, which you just sang. Yeah. Yeah, pretty sure it is. But anyway, this didn't sell, Deb, because of a, it's a Blur promo CD. This sold because the artwork is Banksy. Oh! Oh, yeah. So Banksy did this cover just for their promo. And be Boy, boys and girls, yep. So it sold for $61 directly on uh, eBay UK. Makes sense. Did you see Pawn Stars win? What's his face went crazy buying Banksy's? Mm hmm. Yeah. I, that makes sense that that would sell like that. Wow. Cool. And hey, Linda Ronstadt, let's get her in there. $50 for this DVD audio, which is okay. essentially just a souped up CD. And it's the Bring the Girls Back week. All right. I teased this earlier. Bought this Mishmash by Mickey Katz. 56 hilarious songs by this 
Uh, bless you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she caught me off guard there. <laughs> Clarinet player, one hundred dollars. Well, ninety nine dollars. I bought it for a buck sixty at Savers. So now a lot of times I buy stuff right at record stores, pay a premium, buck sixty at a thrift store, one hundred dollars. That's incredible. Stay says she's pretty sure she found one. Hmm, am I forgetting anything? Hey, wait, hold up. Don't forget about me. <laughs> Whoops, now it's time for Stacy's budget bin scores. No, but I shipped this one today. So, Stacy, we were at Zia Records one night, and Stacy combed through the soundtrack sale bin and pulled out this kindergarten cop for $3.50, and we shipped it and sold it today for $40. Wow, her 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 prices have staying up there at the thirty nine. Hey, hang on, hang on. Let me give her some love. Good job, honey. Yay. <laughs> she must be up to about five hundred dollars now in her profit bank. Hell yeah. <laughs> And now it's time for our duds of the week. Do not let our mistakes be yours. Okay. This oops, thing has been oops, sitting oops. around since 2017. Obviously, that's the year. Uh, anyway, I dropped the price. Oh, I must have. Oh, I, I dropped the price since I put this up there to $11.99. And I'm also going to check and see if I can ship it for less. Because, you know, it's a little box, but it's heavy. So I'm going back through some of our older stuff and, and revisiting. What are, we, how, what are we charging for shipping? Will it fit in a padded flat rate envelope? I don't know. So I'm going to see. But yeah, it's still hanging around. I know Michael Freed talks about Cranium, but I have no luck with it. <laughs> well, it's just the booster box. It's not the actual game. Oh, I know. Yeah. Even the games. When I find the games, like, no. And this has been hanging around for a while, too. We've sold one. Um, so it's just a cardboard. I, You know, Halloween, I thought somebody would buy it. The one we did sell went to Hawaii. Oh, wow. Yeah, Oops. so... And then mine are, uh, you know, sometimes these vintage nightgowns do well. This one sat forever. I actually, I, always, I took an offer of 10 bucks. I'm like, all right, goodbye. Because, you know, it doesn't weigh enough. Then I charge five bucks for shipping. So I made a couple bucks on shipping. Yeah. But sometimes don't get attached to nothing. If you yeah. realize you're like, oops, I shouldn't have had that. <laughs> Someone throws you any money. You're like, yes, please. I'll take it. Yeah. All right. We'll see if you can figure out why this was a, was a dud, Deb. Oh, um, look at that four bids, $203 for a stack of Viewmaster stuff. Why is this a dud? Now, was it, was this a score? Did you, did you share it earlier when it was sold? And that was a score? No, nope, no, nope, this just sold this week. Oh, uh, the, buyer, why is this a dud? Was a buyer canceled? They didn't want it. No, no, nope, nope, cause, nope. cause you can't find all of them or <laughs> no, good guesses. Very good guesses, but no. So I let the teenager who works for me just off and running. She's doing her thing and she does really good most of the time. So this one, she lists at an auction because we're doing all the, the view masters at an auction and she listed on, you know, Friday, Saturday. I'm getting a lot of bids. I got my Apple. Uh, nope. It, that, that, no, that, that's the second little mistake she made the four ninety nine shipping, but that's not the actual mm -hmm. She listed this at auction for 24 hours. Oh. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh. Because this should have been around 300 bucks. Yeah. I would guess. Yeah. But luckily, a couple people, like, I need this right now. So they did bid. So look, I made a ton of money on this box I bought. I mean, we're probably up to around two grand off a $400 investment. So good money. But I said where I said, You've got to make sure it's seven days because the when you when you use ink frog the initials one day. Oh yeah, you got to change. Yeah, and then I said, "Hey, is this under a pound?" And she said, uh, "I go that'll cost you." Now it went to California, so only cost her two bucks. Oh good, I say there went her Christmas bonus. <laughs> so yeah, so it wasn't too bad. So now but she's it's, going it's still time. a win overall. But if you have someone helping you, you got to make sure you got to keep keep track. Yes. So she going through a closet to find something she can bring you to sell for hundred bucks to pay you back. Nah, nah <laughs> she's a good kid. So yeah. that's how we learn. It, it's always a le learning lesson. So I'm I'm cool with that. And you still did good. Two hundred bucks. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I'm not I'm not really that mad, but you know, could have been better. Yeah. Just
And now it's time for Where in the World Did Our Stuff Go? If you are not shipping internationally, you are leaving out 7.3 billion with a B potential customers. All right, Debbie didn't have me this week, but someone, someone in Naples, Italy, needed a Jim Belushi and Dan Aykroyd CD <laughs> autographed. So that's why we have this segment, because you never know when someone is in Naples, Italy going, you know what I need right now? I need the the not as funny brother of the Belushi brothers <laughs> and Dan Aykroyd singing blues. That's what I need. And I love the top have love will travel. It travels yeah. all the way to Italy. <laughs> so please list everywhere because you never know what people are going to need and when they are going to need it. That's right. And we'll give it. This <laughs> and now it's time for you have got to be shipping me. What to do and what not to do when it comes to shipping. I asked Jason if I could talk on this. I, I touched on it last week, but I couldn't get up a good enough picture of this. If you're not using these new packing slips, they are so cool. This is one of the coolest things eBay's brought out for a long time because there's a QR code. They can snap and it takes them right into your store. But you won't get this one if you're on your shipping page and it says print packing slip and you print that. You can get the one I showed you last week. So go to um, your sold waiting to, you know, what waiting to ship. And then in the little drop down, click print packing slip and more, and then you're gonna get this one. And it will have the ship from and the ship too. Obviously, I left those off for privacy. So it's all right. Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. yeah I, I, I am gonna do a video. I, I it's, I've been such a busy couple of weeks. I'm gonna do a video on this whole new packing slip because you should be using it and why you should be using it. Deb's been talking about it for two weeks now, but it's definitely coming up. So I will have like a 10 minute video on how to, to use it. All right. You're going to teach us how to edit it, right? Yep, that too. Okay, good. All right, I don't think I've ever talked about this. So wherever your shipping station is, it's probably not big as the gigantic shipping table I have, but there should be a, a, a hole, a tub, a box full of scrap cardboard. Yes. When you get boxes in, before you pitch them out, the ones that are beat up and you can't reuse, there's usually one good side still left. Cut that out and throw it in your scrap. And then when I'm shipping $100 CDs, I want to wrap them in a little extra cardboard. I just reach down into my scrap. I always need scrap. And I'm like, I wonder how many people have the scrap cardboard thing near their workstation. Mm -hmm. I know Deb does. I know my mom and dad do. So how many of you in the chat have a scrap cardboard? But you should. And it should be any scrap that isn't just minuscule. Because you never know when you're going to ship a cocktail swizzle. So you need just a skinny piece of cardboard to roll, you know, flap over it. So have all those pieces before you throw a box away, cut off the one good side, put it in your scrap pile, and you'll always have scrap. Yep, exactly. And they don't weigh that much, so it's great to have. Yep. All right. Woo. Going the wrong way on my segments. Here we go. And now it's time for the thrifty tips of the week. Little tips and tricks to help you out when you're outsourcing. Okay. When you go out to estate sales, friends of the library sales, garage sales, wherever, bring your own bags. These are the nice big Ikea ones. And then you can write your name on it. Mine have my name on them. Because um, you're at the estate sale and you want to buy all this stuff. And then where do you put it? Do you go and do you trust the cashier? I'm going to set this right here and no, you're not going to let anybody else buy it. Um, so you can put stuff in, then you can just drag them along. We also use these because, you know, we take our stuff to the post office. So I fill these big things up with um, boxes and slide them on the floor while I'm in line. Yes, I go to the post office. So anyway, they're really good to have. You know, you get a bunch of jewelry or a bunch of books because we've made big piles. And thankfully, it was still there when we got back. But when I worked at the library cell one day, someone took someone else's brown paper sack. Had they had a nice one and drop a business card in there or a slip of paper with your name and phone number on it. So if somebody accidentally takes off with your stuff, you know, you can maybe get it back. But yeah, these are so convenient when you're, you don't want to set something down. What do you do with it? You know, if your arms are bulging with clothes and stuff. I love that idea. There's something I've never thought of in my entire thrifting career, having a big bag with your name on it for estate sales. I love that. Yay. I love that. Okay, here's my sourcing tip. When you go to thrift stores, as I did the other day, and uh, this is a hidden gem thrift store in Vegas. Even if you live in Vegas, I guarantee you, you've never found this thrift store. Uh, mm -hmm. And my friend actually works for the company that runs this thrift store. So I'm going to be doing a video next week to let everyone know where this honey hole is because no one else that shops there, uh, the other resellers, no one, no one tells anybody. I'm going to tell everybody. But anyway, when you go to thrift stores with mannequins, don't forget. The stuff on the mannequin is for sale. 
no one ever thinks, uh, most people never think, like, I'll just take this off the mannequin. Even when you're at, like, Buffalo Exchange, the mannequins in the window, don't take it off yourself, but ask them. They'll take it off. So if something you want, get it. So here's, I, um, I forgot to take the picture beforehand. This is the mannequin that had the dress on it that I had to pull off very quickly. And here is the dress. Oh. This is the oldest Tory Richard label I have ever seen. So here's the front. That is Zoe modeling for me today. There's the back. And guess how much that was, Deb? $9.99. $3. Oh, my gosh. Look at this kick-ass vintage Tory Richard. Yeah, but I, I'm, I'm guessing most people wouldn't think to make the to take it off the mannequin. Can I add a mannequin story? It's not going to be happy like yours. But anyway, when my grandma died, I was given the job to go find a dress to bury her in. I went through the whole mall, was about to sit down on the middle of the floor and start crying. And I looked up at a mannequin and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is the perfect dress in my grandma's size. I told the lady, take it off the dress. I want the slip. I want it all. And she looked beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't even, you know, dating, I didn't even think about that. You that was on a muscly male, Manny. Yes, because you know what? This thrift store uh is working with what they got. And I got a lot of good stuff from them. So I'm gonna share the love with all of you who live in Vegas or who will vacation in Vegas in the near future. Let us so, know. Uh it's a thrift store. No, and I, I should have helped before. It's a thrift store you'll never run across. It's very hidden. And I'll explain all that in the video. So stay tuned to this channel for that little tidbit oh, yeah. of information. Okay. Get the airplane tickets, Bill. We're going to Vegas. And now it's time for our online selling tips of the week. It doesn't matter if you're selling on Etsy, Depop, Macari, Poshmark, or eBay. These are little tips and tricks to help you when you're selling. All right. Uh, the new uh, spring seller, you know, they're changing um, the, the store. Well, so, uh, I don't know if a lot of people why do I have echo? Can you hear me? I'm echoing. I can hear you just fine with no echo. Oh, that's weird. Anyway, um, the basic store, you can get, we get 10,000 besides the 1,000 they give us. So if I'm going to uh, downgrade from a premium to a basic, because in the collectibles, you get these special, these, um can't see it very well, these certain listings, you get 10,000 of them, which are, so yeah, select categories. And look what's in them. Besides books and music, there's collectibles. So then you go over, pre pretend you're going to do a listing, go into your account. I'm going to set up a listing, browse categories, go down and click collectibles. Oh my gosh, you're not going to believe what comes up. Everything from A to Z. So over there on the right of, of this little screen, I tried to get just, this is just the beginning of what comes under collectibles. And then those are subcategories. Then you click and you go farther. And I'm like, there's no way I could probably, you know, go through 10,000 a month besides the 1,000 I'm going to get when I downgrade to a basic. So don't think that you have to have a premium. Um, even even uh, I think was a pair of Hawaiian, you could go into apparel. So it's it's mind blowing how many things are in available for us to get free 10,000 listings a month with. There. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized I didn't get a tip ready for this. So I have no tip for this today. Oh, okay. Well, you I see what's coming next, and I don't have. I didn't. I just realized I didn't do nothing for this tip. So that's okay. You have plenty of tips coming up for us. Yeah, right? I was gonna say I got a lot coming up, but I was. I just started to laugh. I'm like, oh well, I didn't do a tip today. We'll just go right to this. And now it's time for unseasonably sold. What did you sell out of season? This is too funny. Last week, I didn't have an unseasonably sold. Guess what sold the very next morning? Of course. That's Christmas. Murphy's Law. Christmas picture. And we sold a Christmas Santa tiki, but I picked this. So um, this was, I think it's gone through two Christmases now. I think I paid 50 cents because I bought a whole set of this pattern. Um, and it sold for, uh, did we set? Oh, we accepted a best offer $16 on it. And in case you're watching this in the future, in the future, it is April 15th. Yes. <laughs> And I sold a sexy hula girl Christmas uh, teddy bear this week. Oh, I love it. See, I need to be shopping in your store more. I just bought a tiki mug from uh, Jason. Yeah, yesterday. Debbie buys a tiki mug from me. I go to ship today, and I didn't ever look at the customer's name. I just check real quick, international or domestic, because on the items over a pound, it's going to matter how I ship it. And so I see that this tiki mug's going to Vacaville, and I'm like, no way. And I'm like, it's going to Debbie. Did you get your refund, by the way? 
Oh no! Did I get a refund? No, yes, you did get a refund. I don't want all your money. Oh, I know, but I had to have it. I, it was love at first sight. I had to have it. So I'm gonna pull. So this thank bear. you, thank you. Yes, but this bear. But yeah, I mean, I had this bear long before Christmas, and it sold uh, the middle of April. So. Yeah, that's that's really cute. If you are not listing your your holiday things all year round, do it. Well, here's a tip: all of us need to shop in each other's store because we have some really cool stuff. And then I get upset when I see, oh, you sold that. I would have bought that. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Becky. Uh, you can downgrade your store with no penalty to April 30th. Now, I'm not downgrading because I always crest past 1,000 anyway, and I'm, I am I want to get bigger. And so now that I have 10,000, hell yeah. But like Debbie, if you figured out the numbers, cool. Yeah, 10,000 should do us just fine, or 11,000. Right, okay, real quick before we get to the questions, let's talk about what's upcoming. Okay, those of you in the Seeker Beach, tomorrow night is my uh, webinar for the month, my surf report, flipping matchbooks. So uh, I, I kind of broke it down this way. We talked about matchbooks a smidge in last month's webinar. And when we talked about it, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going to do that next month, which is this month now. Uh, it, it's great because they're very collectible. They're some worth a crazy amount of money. And with, with some exceptions, they're all the same size. So once you learn how to ship one, you're good. It's like CDs. It's magic. Uh, so we're going to talk about where to find them, how to find them, how to list them, how to sell them, how to ship them, and then show you a lot of the bolos, things you should be on the hunt for. So that's tomorrow night, Yay. Friday night, 4-16, uh, 7 p.m. East Coast, 4 p.m. West Coast. So those of you in the Seeker Beach, mark your calendars. Now, Saturday night, because I'm insane. I'm going to do four shows in a row. Saturday night, uh, uh, I went to the Amoeba Records reopening in Hollywood. Amoeba is the biggest record store in the world. It's the most awesome in the world. And uh, I basically did a military operation to get prime, prime spot in the line to get in and still had a wonderful night's sleep. So we'll talk about that when you wait in line for a business to open and what to do. And that bag in my hand there. Oh, actually, uh, I have the I have it right here. Hold, please. Hold, please. Okay, that bag's right here. That is $1,300 worth of CDs. Uh, $1,263, to be exact. That's going to turn into $3,000, $4,000, $5,000. So when you tune in Saturday night, and it's going to be uh, uh, 8 o'clock East Coast, 5 o'clock West Coast, I'm going to show you every CD I bought. I made mistakes on three of them. I'll, I'll explain why. And there is gonna, the rest will be all bolos, so get your pen and paper ready. And then I will tell you what I paid and what it's going to sell for on Amazon and eBay. Cool. So set your calendar for Saturday night. If you got nothing else to do, come hang out with me, and you're going to get like over 100 CD bolos. Did anybody else notice that the bag is gray in your picture and it's black when you're holding up on your hand? How are no, I didn't even notice that. Yeah. And then Sunday, mom and I were going to talk about feedback. You can leave auto, you can have automatic feedback set up as a seller. You don't ever have to leave it. And then you can reply to it. And the way the reply to it is kind of new. And now you can leave longer feedback. So it is definitely time to talk about feedback. So mom and I are talking about feedback on Sunday, seven o'clock East Coast, four o'clock on the West Coast. Nice. That'll be good. It's always good. Everything's good. We do. <laughs> so, Glenn, you love collecting CDs and you've never sold one? I love collecting CDs too, and I've sold thousands. Okay, but next Thursday, no show. And I'll explain why in one of the questions. One of the questions tonight alludes to why we're have not having a show next Thursday. So uh, there you go. Is that the marijuana day, 422? What day is the marijuana? No, that's 420. Oh, 420. Okay. <laughs> you can tell I don't smoke it. All right, so here, uh, here's Becky's... Uh, uh, she 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 sat down with the numbers and she figured out what she, where she needs to be. Uh, wow, that's a savings. Yeah, good job. All right, so now it's time for ask Jason anything. Oh, I should have made like a little theme song or something. Yeah, well, when we do it next time, you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so let me get rid of that now. Uh, Debbie's gonna ask me the questions. And we will be popping in questions from the chat from this point on, too. So that's what Stacey's here for. I mean, she's here for eye candy, too. But but she's going to be popping in the questions from the chat for me. All right. So. Well, no, just for a second. You know, you're not, not going to be on camera the whole time. I just I want everyone to see how cute my wife is. 
We love seeing you, Stacy. All right, so get rid of that for a second. Okay, hold, please. Okay, bye, honey. All right, let me get the uh, questions up here. And here we go. Hold, please. <laughs> well, Brian's starting us off well. <laughs> I didn't see that on my list. <laughs> Dude, hardcore all the way. What are you talking about? Oh, wow. We just went to the X-rated version. All right. Okay, Janet London Wire. And forgive me if I mispronounce him. Do you like boxers or briefs or both? LOL. <laughs> uh, I am a boxer brief kind of guy. Once they invented the boxer brief, there was no turning back. I love a good boxer brief, a little bit longer on the thigh, and it's got to have the, 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 the front hole because some don't. I didn't know there was such a thing. What? A, boxer briefs? A, 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 yeah, hybrid. <laughs> where Where you been? Well, I, I don't go. I don't wear those. So. Wait here. Let me let me show you. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I mean, boxer briefs have been a thing for like 25, 30 years now. But Deb, where you been? Oh well, I, I my husband doesn't wear them, so I guess that's how I know. <laughs> All right, there's a couple questions there, so pop them in. Well, like me said, if somebody doesn't ask. I mean, yeah, go ahead. To... Hit him in. Yeah. Oh, okay. so hit, hit him as you see him. Uh, who is my man crush since no one asked? Uh, uh, Jason Momoa, because we have the same name. Oh, oh <laughs> that's the only reason. <laughs> well, plus he's awesome and, and yeah. hot and sexy, you know. Yeah. Yes, okay. I use web interpret. I've always used web interpret uh, for overseas listings for sure. And you're not on managed payments then yet either, right? I had to sign into it and they're getting it all fixed up so soon. Good. Yeah, we love it. Okay, Nicole Sprung. Do you actually scan each and every CD in a store or at a sale, or are you looking at titles only? So I, I've been doing CDs for 21 years. I definitely don't need to scan everything, but with the with the tool in my hand, the things I don't know, I scan. So I do scan, scan quite a bit because even at 21 years, there's still so much I've never seen, um, and, and, and things change. What was hot a year ago might not be hot no more, I and so... I was with him and I scanned an Elvis CD. He goes, why are you getting that? I go, because it's worth 25 bucks. You were shocked. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And uh, we'll talk about scanning a little bit more later. But I do do a lot of scanning because it's quick and easy. And it gives you up to the minute information. Very valuable. Go ahead. You just pop it in. Okay. Yes. Dale, Dale Nicholson. Okay. So don't hate me. I still don't know why I need a store. Free stuff. All right. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So, Dale, hang tight. Don't go anywhere. Okay, El Ali oops, oh. oops. We're, we'll go back to that one, Stace. Alisa Goldman, Jason. Uh, no one cared, Alisa. They were the worst viewed shows of all my shows, and so I stopped doing them. No one, no, till till right now, no one missed them. No one asked about them. No one cared, and hardly anyone paid attention to them. So I stopped doing them. I thought they were fun. All right. Okay, Ron Cunningham, what is your most rare tiki mug? Well, I happen to have a graphic. Oh. <laughs> so there's two. The one on the left is called Tiki Bob. Uh, it was uh, uh, a bar in San Francisco. And the movie company that put out Elvis's Blue Hawaii made their own version to give out to the theater owners who attended a pre-screen of Blue Hawaii. So... The theater maybe held five, 600 people. So at the time, there was only that many made. Okay, that was 70 years ago, six years ago, whatever it was. And so not every one of them survived. So I have that one. And then the one on the right is called The Severed Head from Ren Clark's Polynesian Village in Texas. That one's impossible to find and extra impossible to find with all the pink paint in the hair and the red blood. So you essentially, it's called The Severed Head. You essentially drink out of his neck. Okay. And so those are the two holy grails. All right. Ecom Chicago wants to know, do you use WorthPoint? I do every single day because we do a lot of collectibles. And so if you're selling commodity items, you don't need WorthPoint. If you're selling collectibles like things like this, you need it every single day. Right. Oh, so was someone asking how much? Uh, so Nadine said severed head 800. Oh, no. Uh, so both of these mugs sell in the couple thousand dollar range. So the Elvis one sold recently for like twenty five hundred, and the Severed Head sold for about eighteen hundred. 
Now, aren't there a lot of the bobs that aren't the Elvis one? Yeah, all the bobs are worth money, usually a couple two, three hundred dollars, but the Elvis one is super duper rare. And you hit two collectors, Tiggy collectors and Elvis fanatics. So anytime you have any vintage collectible that hits two different audiences, that's when the premium goes up. Yes. What are the best times to buy a Buffalo Exchange? Uh the 15th. Items. That kind. Oh, items. Uh everything that's rare. I mean, I go through every section, the mail section, when Stace is with me. There's Stace. Uh, she goes through all the female section, and we just look for the cool stuff. Yeah. All yeah. right. Okay, Dale Nicholson. So do you do listings 24-7, or do you take a break? Uh, I do not do listings 24-7. I haven't done any listings this week. So uh, we're going to talk about that a little bit longer later, but I, I have two assistants, so they do all my listings for me. Nice. Oh yeah, I bought the uh, severed head for eight hundred bucks. No, no, at the time it was worth sixteen hundred. It was an impatient eBay seller. They did an auction for a week at two thousand, and then they did an auction for a week at eighteen hundred. And then when it got down all the way to eight hundred, I'm like, well, I'm gonna throw a bid in because that mug is worth around fifteen, sixteen hundred, and I won with eight hundred and twenty bucks. Nice. And so now it's over two thousand dollars. No, but you can buy it at Disney World. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Janet Galasco, whom, since you're a multifaceted entrepreneur, when you wake up in the morning, what about your job are you excited about the most? If you can't think of one, what are your top three? So, uh, uh oh, we're going to hear something good. They're out there in the wagon. I just brought them over. Um, three things. So, I have my iPad plugged in next to my bed. I wake up, rub my eyes, put my glasses on, and I look at the, here's the first three things I look at. What did I sell overnight? That is always first. I'm like, sweet, I sold this, I sold that, I sold that. Second, I check my messages. Who needed me on the East Coast that didn't realize I was still asleep so I can help them? And then third, I pop into both the thrifting board and the secret beach to see who's had successes in, overnight. And I love to see everyone who is hanging around me, I love to see their successes. Yes. That's a good morning. Paul Rasmussen, do you flip Crocs? I do. Here's okay. some Justin Bieber ones I just purchased. Oh, wow. <laughs> Bieber. So wow. these are selling for about double what I paid for them. So yes, anytime they have limited edition Crocs, I flip them. And also, I'm currently wearing some. <laughs> I love you, Crocs. Did you get Justin Bieber for yourself to keep? No, no, no. I, I, don't, I do not like Bieber. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you will make money off him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. Aaron Richards, where? Uh, I forget. So if you want to Google it real quick, I forget exactly where Ren Clark was. Now, Ren Clark was awesome because although he was a Tiki guy, he was a magician first. So you went into, I think it was the Hilton and you took, huh? Fort Worth. And you took an elevator down, but he built it. So it looked like you were going down under the water, under the ground. And it was like this magical place. And so his whole bar and restaurant was magical besides the antique too. Why, why is it gone? Did he just go out of business? Or? Yeah, you know, a lot of things didn't last from the 60s. Oh, this that's guy, right. He just, killed a lot of shit. Just cool. Yeah. Okay. Ginny Lorette, what state had a train that had a tiki bar in it? Okay. You're, you're actually putting two things together, Ginny. It is Arizona. It's Phoenix. The place is called Century Grand. And within Century Grand, there's three bars in the same building. Platform 18, which is the train. Greyhound RX, which is a New Orleans apothecary bar. And Undertow, which is the tiki bar. So Platform 19, when you go in there... Why is it not clicking? Come on. Hmm. Oh, there we go. This is the inside of the bar. It looks like you're in a train, and those are all video screens, so it feels like you're on an adventure for 90 minutes. Wow. And then the Gray Hen is the apothecary bar, and they have the biggest whiskey selection in the entire state. So there'd be a better picture. Yeah. And then Undertow is the Tiki Bar. Boom, there it is. So they, they own all three of these? Yeah, and they're all in the same building now. Undertow used to be in a separate building. They're all in the same building now. I can't wait to go back because we were at the other one. Nice. So this train had a train car that was a tiki bar. I, I don't know, Jenny. Hmm. I even looked at Stace and she's like, 
but now it does have a tiki bar in a train with a tiki bar. I don't know of any tiki bars that were in a train. Oh, here we go. What? When Metro North had a jungle tiki bar car on its train. No, but we that's not something that we go to. Oh, something place we go? Yeah. Oh. I thought she was just Alaska. In general. I, I got nothing, Jenny. <laughs> I got nothing. Janet Linden Wire. How do you keep your sourced items from turning into a hoard profit pile? Do you have rules once an item hits your office? Oh, I need that rule. Okay, so it's going to look like a hot mess right this moment. My adult assistant is not here right now. She'll be back in a week or so. Uh, but this is the shipping, receiving, organizing table. It's a giant table, as you can see. So the flow is new product comes in. Somebody, me or the adult assistant, enter, enters it into the database, uh, the inventory database. And then it gets tubbed and sent over to the photo studio for the uh, teenager to take pictures of. And then goes back to this table so the adult assistant can list it and then it gets put away. So that's the flow. Um, I've been without my adult assistant for a couple of weeks and it's been crazy busy and I'm trying to do four shows this weekend. So it looks a little messy right now. <laughs> that's progress. Yeah. All right. The next one's from my mommy. Okay. Oh, nope. Never mind. No. What mom or what stays? No, no, I, I gotta put it in. Oh, well, why are you doing that? Paul Rasmussen, uh, the SoCal what, rum yet? Ooh, what's it called? What what SoCal rum? I, I gotta imagine there's a few rums being made in Southern California. So is there a specific one, uh, Paul? And while we're waiting for more from Paul, it's Quarter Peggy. What tiki mug are you still wanting to add to your collection? That is a holy grail. All right, I need everyone to sear this image into their brain. This is my holy grail. I've been collecting for 21 years, and I've never even seen one in person. Wow. Okay? Now, from this side, it does not look like much. Uh -uh. Okay? It looks like nothing. This is from Zombie Village in San Francisco, which doesn't exist anymore. If you go Google it, you'll be like, wait, Jason, it exists. There's a new bar called Zombie Village. Mm -hmm. But it's what's on the other side because it was called Zombie Village. This side, plain palm tree, no big deal. Sarah, this side, zombie. Oh, that is a badass mug. It is. That is a badass mug. Well, how many years has it been since that came out? So the Zo Zombie Village was probably the '60s in San Francisco. Okay, okay. Yeah. so it's been a while. So if you ever see what seems seems like a generic palm tree mug, flip it. It might be the zombie. Well, I can't wait. We're going to find one. That mug sells for lots of money, and I'll be happy to pay you for it. Okay. We've all got our marching orders. We're going to, someone is going to find that. Okay. Greg Petriv, how do you somewhat quickly ascertain real from fake vintage rock tour t shirts? All right. So pause on that. Uh, I haven't even heard of that, Paul. So I have no answers. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing. So I think, Paul, you should buy me a bottle and send it to me. So has Paul tried it? Have you tried it? We'll what we think of it. <laughs> is it good? Do you like it, Paul? Yes, those two sides of that mug do not go together. That's why it's such a, a trickster. Okay. So uh, quickly ascertain a couple things, and I got some examples. This tour was a Bon Jovi tour. Kid Rock was the opening act. The opening act and the headliner are never on the same T-shirt. Because then the headliner would have to cut in the opening act on the prices. Plus, you think Bon Jovi would ever have a picture of Kid Rock pointing a gun at you? No. And then here's the backside. This is a picture of Bon Jovi when he wasn't with Bon Jovi. This was some solo stuff. So this is a Photoshop special. Yeah. Okay. Now, the other thing, I know it's not specifically a tour shirt. Any T-shirt of any dead artist will never truly exist. Sunrise, August 1958, sunset, June 2009. No legit shirt will be ever made because no company ever wants to remind you their artist is dead. Oh, good point. So all these tribute shirts, they're all fake bootlegs. Now, do they sell on eBay? Sure. Could Michael Jackson's company or Sony say, pull that? Absolutely. So stay away from those. Yes. Okay, Neville, 
Question, is Worth Point global or in the US? I asked earlier, but my net closed on, so I don't know if you saw. Okay, so anyway, is Worth Point global or in, or in the US? That's a good question. I don't have an answer to because I'm located in the US, so I've never thought about it anywhere else. But mm -hmm. I can definitely... Uh, have to ask I can definitely you. find out for you. I love these questions. Yeah, I don't know. I really don't. So uh, let me find out for you. Send me a message on Facebook and I will find out. Inquiring minds want to know. Okay, Clara Torres, how much is in your profit pile? Like, really? Is she asking you or me? <laughs> don't <Yeah>. ask me. <laughs> uh, well, you're going to see a picture in a minute. So, Clara, that will answer your question. So let me leave it at that for a second. Nice. Uh, Cause some of these, you know, some of these questions were kind of overlaps. So, but everyone who posted a question early are getting a chance to win a prize. So. Yes. Okay. Jennifer Edwards, Kelms, Kelms A. What are some tips for increasing my listing speed? I have lots of items to list and it just takes me too long to get one done. I need this too. <laughs> so the best the best tip, Jennifer, is don't list one thing at a time. So don't go take a pictures of your tiki mug and then sit down and write the listing. Go take all your pictures at once. Take them all at once. And then keep them in grouped together. So say you got a bunch of jeans. Do them all together. Don't do a pair of jeans then a tiki mug, and then a bra, and then a book, and then back to another pair of jeans. Because that's so many extra steps. Stick in your, do all your jeans together. Because that way, you don't have to change the category you're in. There's a lot you don't have to touch at all. S the same with tiki mugs, CDs. Stick stick with the same. The same helps you get faster. But do all your pictures at once, and then figure out what your pricing is. So if you're doing CDs, they weigh four ounces when shipped. So once you know the price to ship a four ounce item, boom, you can just burn through them. But don't, I find those newbies, take a picture and then go list. Take a picture, weigh it, measure it, go list. Once you get used to it, keep all like things together. Great tip. Great question. And then this is her follow-up. Ooh. Okay. Do you cross post between platforms or separate between them? Uh, I cross post a handful of things here and there every week. So if I have something very rare and expensive, it goes immediately up to every platform. Let's get as many eyes on as possible. If things aren't selling, then I'll, I'll bounce them around the different platforms. Uh, I see a bunch of questions. You can throw them up there. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. eBay, do they charge, oh, C, C Brown, do they charge state sales tax on the shipping? State sales tax? No. no. I don't think so. I don't think so. I Is there a way you can... I Sometimes I've seen a, a where I could check a box to do yes, charge sales tax, but I don't know, that's a good and, question. And I live in a, in a very unpopulated state, so I rarely sell in my own state, so I don't mean pay attention. Sorry. Yeah, I don't pay attention either. I'm so... Do I keep all the pictures I take or delete them? Uh... Once they've sold, I delete them. Okay, that's good. Ken Green, what's more important, listing certain amount of items or a certain amount of profit, in your opinion? Amount of items, for sure. Okay. And Pearl Tree Finds, do you use your phone to take pictures? Oh, yeah. Cameras are a thing of the past. If you've got a modern phone, now I don't know crap about uh, Android, but I got a 12 Pro Max iPhone. Better than any camera I've ever owned in my life. So absolutely. Plus, with with Apple products, I've, I'm on an i. So I'm on my iMac desktop. Stacy's on my iMac uh, uh, MacBook Air. I have a, a a phone and an iPad. The second I take a picture, they're on all my platforms or on all my devices, so I can use them wherever I want. So easy. Yes. Okay, Robert K. They changed the eBay seller page. How do I change it back to original? You don't. It's the new page. Learn to use it. <laughs> they still have the custom where you can kind of move some things around. I, have, I don't pay attention. I just use it. <laughs> yeah, it's the custom one. Yeah. So a lot of people were still in the old one. They finally got moved to the new one. It's the new one. You have to deal with it now. I love it. I think it's great. Okay. Ruth, is there any category that you just won't touch? I'm pretty sure I know the answer. As a lesser question, is there a category or, or item type that you just aren't crazy about feeling? 
Uh, Ruth, are you here? <laughs> what do you think I won't touch? Uh, <laughs> probably everyone knows this, but uh, uh, Stacy and I have never had any kids, nor, nor will we ever. So I don't know nothing about kids' clothes. Nothing. So I can I can do toys. I can do plush. I can do games. Uh, but kids' clothes, yeah, I'll never be in there. Uh, is there a category item type that I just aren't crazy about dealing with? Not that I'm not crazy, but I wish I could do better in women's shoes because there's so many. Mm -hmm. uh, e even though Nadine's done a great three-part webinar on the secret beach, I'm still in the women's section going, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just looking for that teak. What's it called? Pack? They're like little ballet shoes called teak or tech that sell for a hundred bucks. They're there somewhere. Okay. John Davis, we are approaching, unfortunately, the fifth anniversary of losing prints. Maybe using WorthPoint, you could do a couple of examples of items that sold at the time and see if the value maybe has come down or gone up or. All right. So here's the problem though, John, with worth point, it's collectible items. So if people don't list their music and collectibles, which most of us don't, I can't see it. So I'm thought, all right, how do I answer this question with worth point? Because well, how else can I go back five years? If, if an item is listed in a CD or a record or a cassette, can't see it on worth point. It's only collectibles. However, I did find an answer. Oh. Okay. So I actually had this, I sold it for a lot of money. The, but although this is not my sale, this was an interactive CD-ROM for way back in the day uh, in your uh, like Windows 2 computer. And so you walked around a fictional Paisley Park and it, it was kind of like a game. And then there would be specific songs only on this. Yeah, what's that say? Uh, MPC level two and max CD-ROM. So this was the three weeks after he died or two weeks after he died, sold for 96 Dollars and recently someone found 13 of them. Wow. <laughs> and sold them for 20 bucks each. So yeah, definitely dipped. However, majority of the print stuff, unlike a lot of artists, stayed up way up and continues to stay up. So uh, you know, when DMX passed, there's there was a window of two days, and then his stuff is it's just over because DMX didn't have that career like Prince had, or Michael had, or Bowie had. Bowie, Prince, Michael, they still command big money for a lot of the stuff. Not everything, but a lot. Good question. All did right. You, did you play that game back when it was out? Oh, yeah, I had it. Yeah, I'm a Prince nerd, so yeah, I had everything. Okay, Jim, I will be working again, but I hope this is not a touchy question, but do you still have any kind of relationship with Brian Goodman? Nope. Nope. <laughs> That was quick. <laughs> oh, yeah. And we'll go a little bit deeper in that in a second with a different question. Okay. I haven't talked to him or seen him in uh, six years. And you live in the same town, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, Daniel Gree, is Trader Sam's considered true tiki? Now, that's a funny question to me because I don't know why it wouldn't be. But let's look at a couple of pictures of the original Trader Sam's. That's the one in... Uh, uh, Anaheim here in Disneyland. There's the lights. Oh, I can't wait to go back. There's the tiki's behind the bar. Yeah. And there's the bar. So the first time I went to Trader Sam's, Stacy wasn't with me, unfortunately. She was working. And I texted her and she said, and she said, <laughs> What do you think? And I said, I want to get a cot and move in. <laughs> I said, the drinks were great. The music's perfect and the decor is awesome plus there's disney magic in the bar yes. so with all that you get a great tiki bar with disney magic hello yes it's for sure true tiki that's where i fell in love with tiki i texted jason like now i get it that was our first tiki bar and i was in love yeah please is that open yet I can answer this. No, because I don't live in California. You can only go to Disneyland if you live in California right now. So, nope. I live in I live in Nevada. You should get it. We live in California. All right. Here we go. Okay, Kelly. I'm just starting out. Should I open an eBay store? If so, what level? Or how to tell the, which level is right for me? Okay. So, just Google eBay store subscription and fees and then read this. Kind of like Deb, uh, Debbie. Uh, Becky was talking about earlier. You got to look at the, the, the facts and figures. So the Star Store gives you 250 free fixed prices, fixed price listings a month. Basic gives you a thousand. Premium now gives you ten thousand. You get a certain amount of free auctions every month. 
uh, fixed price listing fees after you hit your 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 uh, allotment, how much you get in uh, free ship free shipping supplies. So uh, Google this and then think about okay, how many do I have right now, and what's my goal for say the next six months. So if you're at 200 listings right now and your goal for the next six months is 300 listings or 400, I'd probably kick it off with a starter, but maybe quickly move up to the basic because the basic offers you a lot more. Plus, remember, the basic has the 10,000 in the collectibles category. We get that, too. I, I don't know why Debbie keeps that going because nothing's changed in terms of. Uh, Stacy's computer. Uh, is she on the show? No, you. I know, but I thought maybe it's coming. I don't know. Me. Yeah, yeah, no, St Stacy's muted. Don't blame it on me. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything else open. Okay, on um, that question, it also depends on how fast you list. LOL. Yes. Hey, Toomey, what's happening, buddy? I was just talking to my buddy Josh today. Josh has a great podcast called Talk To Me and he interviews a lot of metal stars, uh, heavy metal stars. And I'm a little behind. I think it was about a year ago we interviewed Dee Snyder, Twisted Sister. As a great interview. So if you like heavy metal at all, go to the podcast, wherever you get your podcast, and look up Talk To Me because uh, he's got a lot of great guests. So he wants to know what's the future of reselling? Uh, you know, I, on eBay. You know, with the COVID, we realize people love to shop online and they want to pay dumb money for dumb stuff. And I don't mean that in a negative way. People are like, oh, you know, you would think they would need things they need. Nope, nope. They need this rare CD for $300. They don't need uh, toilet paper and paper towels and hand, san hand sanitizer. They need rare CDs. Yeah. Okay, uh, Melissa, have you ever... What? Oh, sorry. Brian heard <laughs> Stacy in the back. <laughs> okay, Melissa, have you ever worked for the man or has reselling always been your career? If you have worked outside of thrifting, what did you do? Oh, and yes, I've been on multiple episodes of Talk To Me. So check it out. Yeah. All right. So for you, Melissa, I dug out an old picture. Bam. Who's this dork? Wow. Is that Domino's or John's? Yep, that is Domino's Pizza. Here's how much of a dork I am. I remember the exact colors. That is Arctic White. Shit. Uh, <laughs> uh, Arctic White, Processed Blue, and Burnt Orange. Those were the three official colors of Domino's back when I worked for them. That's how much of a dork I was. So I spent a lot of time in the uh, food industry. My grandparents owned a pizza shop. My parents owned a pizza shop. I worked at Domino's. I worked at a bunch of other uh, pizza places. And then, oops, nope. And then, most of you might not know this, I used to size cheerleaders for their uniforms. So this is the big national championship. The company that owns all this is called Varsity Spirit Fashions. And so my mom worked for the company for like 20 some years and I worked for her for a while, then got my own territory. And so, yeah, my job was sizing cheerleaders for their uniforms. And then before I started working for myself, I started working at record stores and I ended up working at Tower Records in Hollywood on Sunset Boulevard. That's where you got all your knowledge. That's where I got all my knowledge. Hell yeah. At least in that department. Okay. Nadine wanted to go big and go three-parter. So here's the first part. What is the weirdest thing you've ever sold on eBay? Yep, Japanese silk love ropes. And I found them in the kids section because, of course, it's animated. <laughs> it, was the, it was the Savers on Rancho here in Vegas. We were filming for Thrift Hunters, and there was two of them. Because, <laughs> oh. okay. you know, so <clears throat> the staff at the Rancho Savers, uh, mostly Hispanic, so they don't speak a lot of English. So they saw the animated thing. And they thought, oh, this must be a kid's thing. <laughs> Speaking of kids, Japanese like, love rope, no chafing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Too much. You never know. All right. This is Nadine's number two. Okay. What lesson would you tell your 20 year old self now if you could do it all over again? Okay. So I, 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 I posed this to Stace last night because I was thinking about what happened at 20. But no, that wasn't the question. It's what would you tell your 20-year-old self? So as you go through life, avoid the situation. And I figured it out today. I figured out two things. A, really uh, appreciate the people in your life that are awesome. For instance, this lovely woman right here. Uh, appreciate your spouse and appreciate your friends. This other lovely woman right here. And when people come to you because they've stalked you and they want to be your friend, don't be their friend. 
oh, God, anyone God. who stalks you to be your friend, they're awful fucking people. Ask us. We know, don't we? Yeah. So, yeah. So I thought about that. So, yeah, when I was 20, if I would have told myself that, I'd be better off right now because I would have appreciated my friends and family a little bit better and steered clear of people who were looking for something. But you had, you should, we all really learned big lessons. All of us. Yeah. And her third part. 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Which decade do you love the most and why? Well, I always wanted to be a cowboy. So the 1860s. <laughs> Yay. I love uh, Butch and Cast, uh, Butch and Sundance. I love those movies. I love Young Guns, Young Guns too. Oh, I always too. wanted to be a cowboy. But, uh, but now I know Nadine was talking about the 1900s. <laughs> I know Nadine was on the 1900s, so 60s for sure. Now, I don't really see myself in a suit, but the furniture, the music, oh, yeah. the cocktails, I am all about the 1960s. Yes. Okay, Dale wants to know, do you have siblings and what do they do? <laughs> yes, I'm a dork. You didn't say what decade. I mean, uh, what century? <laughs> all right, where was Dale's thing? Do you have siblings? Yeah, I have a sister who's a massage therapist, and I have a brother Who's a uh, hairdresser, hairdresser, barber? What do you call him? Hairstylist. He owns his own salon. So yeah, hairstylist. Hairologist, like a mixologist, a hairologist. <laughs> okay, Alyssa, I would love to see the, the cheerleaders' expression when Jason walked in the room to fit their uniforms. <laughs> so, uh, so I would book the appointments and then I'd walk into the appointment. Now, don't forget, this is the 90s, you know. Things are a little bit different nowadays. Yeah. Uh, are you here to size our cheerleaders? Yeah, you're a man. Yeah, you and I talked on the phone. Who'd you think you were talking to? Oh, I thought you were the secretary. I go, weird, but no. But but it's my job. I work for this multi-million dollar company. I know how to do it without being <laughs> weird and creepy. So, yeah. And you can still slice people up, can't you? Oh, you're about a size. Yeah, it, it became a fun bar trick because I, I sized so many different shapes and sizes from like six-year-olds to 23. Five year olds, because I had some pro teams, uh, I could look at a woman and know the size of her body. And so we'd be at bars back in the day, and my friends would drag girls over. You know, you know, my, my single friends were trying to hook up. Hey, my buddy knows your size. Now, guys don't know girl sizes ever. And then I'd be dead on every single time. And the girls would be like, How do you do that? I'm like, <laughs> I got I got skills. Got skills. Okay, Vicky, when is the best time to do listings on Sunday evening or Monday evening? That's what I've always wondered. Now, funny, Vicky's part of an answer later on, so keep that in mind. Um, you know, because you, I think, Vicky, you list worldwide, I list worldwide, you should list worldwide, time is really no essence anymore. Because when you're listing at, uh, Vicky lives in California, when you're li listing at 6 a.m. on the West Coast, it's already 9 a.m. on the East Coast, it's late afternoon in England, it's tomorrow in Australia. So really, it doesn't matter. Now, if you're doing auctions, if you have something super rare, I would recommend a 10-day auction and start it so you get both weekends. It's good. But other than that, you know, uh, we sell worldwide, so. Yep. All yeah. right. Oops. Andy, I'm afraid of going to my first estate sale. Have you ever had a show on Thrifty Business on estate sales? I'm going to work on that. Also, have you ever met someone from either this side or Thrifty Business and spent the day shopping with them? Uh, I don't know if we've ever talked about tips and tricks for estate sales. So, uh, Deb, Mom, write that down. We'll do a show on it for sure. Yeah. Uh, not because I don't think we ever really have. Like, there are some tips and tricks. So, that could definitely be either a 3D business or a selling past your expiration date. And have you ever met anybody from this? Oh, yeah. I mean, how many? Okay. Show of hands. Who have I thrifted with in the chat right now? Yeah. I mean, there's you're going to see a lot of hands go up. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, but, I learned but, but good idea, Andy. I, I I realized we never done a show like that, so we'll definitely do one in the we've very had, near future. We had estate sell owners on because I have a friend local that does the estate sales. But I wanted to tell Andy real quick. My first time. I mean, I had been to him years ago, but as a reseller, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go, and I'm not gonna buy anything. I'm not gonna be stressed. I'm just gonna go in and see what it was, what's going on. You know, how's it feeling, all that. Well, I ended up buying stuff. So just go in with no preconceived, don't let it, you're not going to be stressed out. Just go in and walk around and look at people and look and see what they're doing. So, yeah. so Joe and I have never thrifted, but we drank together. Ah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. Let's get back to the question I popped in there. Oops. Okay. Adam, how many snacks and drinks does it take to make it through a day of listing? Good. 
Where'd my picture go? Huh? Well, I had a picture lined up. I don't know where it is. So we'll get back to it at some point. Um, I start with a Diet Coke in the morning and then I have some water and then I have lunch with a yogurt and then I have, well, yeah, breakfast. I'm talking about at work. And then I have some water the rest of the afternoon and then I have a Diet Coke with dinner. So that's how my day goes. And outside of my yogurt at lunch, I might have a couple of pretzels here or there, but uh, I'm just too busy working to go get snacks. Uh, yeah. Built Bar. Yeah, Stacey gets me Built Bars. Oh, good wife. I, I don't know. I guess I, I forgot to move the picture over. That's okay. You oh, can. Okay, Mindy, do you pay your assistants an hourly wage, a commission, or per item listed, photographed, or some combination? So there's my team right now. That's Kelly uh, on the left and Zoe on the right. And I, I always paid by the hour, and here's why. Because when they first started having assistants, I had doggies. And so part of their time with me was to take the doggies out when the doggies needed to go out. So it definitely would have been unfair to pay by the piece. Because if I'm not here and they're supposed to be listing and they're outside waiting for three dogs to go poop, that would be way unfair to them. So it was always by the hour, and I've always stayed that way. And uh, it's always worked out for me, so... Yeah, you have great assistance. Okay, Ken wants to know, do you source auctions or mainly just thrift stores? I would say mainly just thrift stores, but I do a lot of online auctions. Yeah, you never talk about that. You should teach us about that. Hey, which one was Adam's question? Because Becky almost chokes. Oh, how many <laughs> snacks and drinks? <laughs> so Becky almost choked on a snack. <laughs> <laughs> now, that's funny and weird. <laughs> do we need to send you paramedics. Mm. Okay, Angelique, do you listen to or watch anything in the background as you list? Very much so. Now, I'm going to show you a picture. Please ignore my messy desk, but I want to show you how my setup is. Okay, I got three monitors and a giant TV. So, sometimes I'm watching something on the right monitor, and if not, I'm watching it on the TV. I watch a lot of video podcasts, and I watch all, a lot of the uh, nighttime shows. I watch Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon. And Seth Myers, And so throughout the day, I listen to my podcast, watch my podcast, and I listen to those. And then I also play some music. But that's my setup. I And you see my iPads in front of my computers. I usually have some type of video on while I'm working. I know some people can do that. Mm -hmm. I do it all day long. Good question. <laughs> oh, pay by the poop? All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't have any now, so... All right. And Ken. Oh, you're very welcome, Ken. Yeah. So uh, we get up usually about 645, 630, 645, and I go to bed about 1230. But I work a 20-minute nap in every day except for today. Oh, that explains a lot. <laughs> okay, Chris, can I tag along the next time you go to the bins? Easy answer. Yep. Let's make a date, Chris. Uh, hang on, Stacey wants to add something to that. Hold on. Because I certainly will not be there. So you, can keep coming. <laughs> you won't do the bins yet, huh? She hasn't got those yet. Oh, she hates them. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. That's weird. I copied it and then. Now, do you have bins in Vegas? I know I went mm -hmm. once. It was yep. one, one section of them. Yeah, I left your note in here because it was funny. Laura, why the beard? It hides your nice face. Did your mom put... Oh, my note. Did your mom put her up to this one? <laughs> so first I'm, thing I thought about... I've almost always had facial hair, and this was my winter beard from like 18 years ago, because in the winter I would get lazy, and then one spring I just didn't shave it, and uh, Stace didn't mind too much. Yeah, that is correct. <laughs> <laughs> And when you're bald, and if you can grow a pretty decent beard, you know. Oh, hey, I found my lost picture. This is my beverage fridge. So if you don't have a beverage fridge, here it is. Oh. Sodas, waters, energy drinks, um, the fun zero-point drinks, uh, you know, that are, are carbonated. So you got to have a beverage fridge when you're working all day. Okay, back to the beard. We were at uh, the win, waiting to go into the, the show area. And who walked by and congratulated us? I said, hey, that's a cool beard. Do you remember? I think um, the snowboarder, Sean White. Oh, was, yeah, Sean White. Yeah, there was <laughs> a comedian. Oh, my God. I totally forgot about that. And there was a comedian. There were three of them together. There was a comedian that I did. Yeah. And one of them goes, nice, weird, dude. 
Yeah, I totally forgot about that. I... Oh, it was uh, Cat Williams. Yeah. It was Cat yeah. Williams. Yeah. Sound like a joke. Cat Williams, Sean White. <laughs> yeah, somebody else. Okay, Alan, common issue. I'm great at buying and selling. I'm a great buying and slow to lot list like me. So I now have too much stuff order in the making. How do you get it all listed? <laughs> all right. Goodbye, Stace. <laughs> so it's back to when you get to that point, the only way to ever get your business bigger is to have hired help. So you've got to get someone to help you. If nothing else, like the teenager takes all my pictures, that pictures take a lot of time. So get someone, if nothing else, to take your pictures. And then I have a doll to do my listings because I'm not the average online seller because besides online selling, I do two weekly shows. I do webinars for my paid group. I do webinars for everybody. I'm doing a speech next week. You know, so I've got these other things that I need the time to do those things so they can do all my listings and stuff. But I, I but I always have a part in it. I source it. I help ship sometimes. Uh, I make sure their listings are right. But you got to get help. Yes. Oh, yes. Let's do it. Yes, that would be fun. Is that thrift stores in Australia? <laughs> yes. Okay, Christine, what and where is your absolute favorite thrift store? So before I answer that, and yes, Lori's right. If you're not hiring somebody, set goals and don't do nothing else till you hit your goal. And stop. Don't be like, I'm going to just go sit and watch Oprah. Put it on the TV, but keep listening. Yeah, and, and put yourself on restriction from buying more. Okay. Well, All right. Do you know where my favorite thrift store is, Debbie? Where? In, yeah. in Vegas. Nope. Nope. Uh, nope. nope. Uh, not even. Not even close to Vegas. Is it in L.A.? No, that's close. That's close to Vegas. <laughs> where? Chicago. Oh, Bill says Chicago. Nope. But you're on. You're on the way. Milwaukee. Nope. Uh, New York. New York. New York. Dollar. Philly. Philly. Yeah. Pat, Philly Aids Thrift is my all-time favorite thrift store for sure. It is 10,000 square feet. Wow. See, Joe knew. Nadine said, please say Pat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But it's 10,000 square feet. And look at this corner. Look at the vinyl and look at the CD corner just wow. in a thrift store. Wow. And here I am one day picking through. So the, so the shelves were full and they had just, just tubs full of CDs in front of the shelves. Filter. But they also have two floors and everything else. Debbie, you would lose your mind the book section. It's amazing. Yeah, so. There's a whole um, uh, wedding dress section. And and as Nadine's already alluded to, down the street, there's a second store, same company, called Giovanni's Reading Room. Again, two floors, but smaller, 3,000 square feet. And they've got a little bit nicer stuff and fun stuff like with great beard comes great responsibility. Oh. So yeah, if you have not been to Philly Age Thrift and some people have been there but didn't realize Giovanni's Reading Room is their part two, you go hit it. They are amazing. Fly Southwest so we can take empty suitcases with us. Okay, Steven, sometimes eBay will automatically offer best buy on my listings and I put no offers too. Yeah, that's eBay for you. When you use a third party lister like me, that never happens. I use Inkfrog. Oh, another point for Inkfrog. Okay, Charmaine, are the bins where you dig and then pay by the pound? Goodwill in Chicago area started selling mystery brown bags for $10 for about 12 clothing items by size. Uh, yeah, by the pound. I've never been in any that have done that. Hey, pop up errands. Stace? Uh, oh, there it is. <laughs> I, oh, I wish I could say no, and I wish I could say it only happened once, but it's happened a few times. Mm, how long yeah. did you play? Quite, uh, quite long. Now, was quite. it you or someone else that broke them? No, it was me. It was you. Okay. Look, when you've been collecting mugs for 20, you know, breakable ceramic mugs for 21 years and you've moved a few times, yeah, they're going to break. Yeah. Glue them back together. Okay, Kathy, how do you deal with the photos you take of your items? Do you have a specific process? I'm drowning in too many pics in too many places. So I use my phone and what I do is when... Stacy and I are driving someplace, uh, and then it's her turn to drive. I'll sit on my phone and go through them and delete all the stuff that I know is sold. Uh, but here's what's happening. Here's how many photos are on my phone right now. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, wow. You double mine. 
So, you know, you just deal with it in your phone. And it's a little bit tricky, but but you got to take that time to go through it. So if you don't go anywhere, say, okay, Tuesday nights, I'm going to go back through and clean up things. But when, when life is a little bit more normal, I travel a lot, so I fly a lot. That's a great time to clean your phone out. Put your headphones on, put your favorite tunes on, and then just clean out all the pictures you don't need no more. Nadine's giving the directions to uh, both Philly AIDS thrift in case you want to. Uh... Oh, that's like Disneyland for thrifters. All right. So kind of the same lines. Uh, this next one, we've kind of already answered it. When is the time to open eBay store? How do we decide which? Yeah. So with that new tiny store, pretty much as soon as you've got like 50 items, you should have the tiny store at least, I think. Oops. Even if you haven't gotten a store yet, at least by your domain name, because you will want that. You can point that to your store, www.yourstore.com or whatever it's going to be. So, get your All right, Deb, you got our little prize tonight? I do. Unopened eBay footy socks. Now, all of you who got your questions in early, I numbered one through 57. So, we're going to spin this wheel, and then I'll look back at my, my list over here and see who wins. So, From eBay yeah. Open, when we went bowling at the, what's it called? Uh, Brooklyn Bowl. Brooklyn Bowl. We walked by it last time we were in Vegas, and I just cried. I stood out there and remembered all the great memories we had in there. All right, number three. So I gotta go back all the way to number three. Number three oh, was I have it right here. Ron Cunningham. Who? Yay! What is your rare tiki mug? So Ron, you have won the eBay sock. So uh, please send me your shipping address, and I will send it over to Debbie. Yep, yeah, and I will send those to you. So thank you, Ron. And thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for giving questions. Thank you all for hanging out in the chat. Uh, where are we? We are at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Does it yeah. cost money to get a domain name? About $14.99 on uh, GoDaddy. There's other places you can get them from, too. And that's for a year. Sometimes you can save money and buy for two years. I just renewed my DebbieWeeder.com because I, I do a year at a time. I'm cheap. But. Yep. And sometimes they have sales. Mm-hmm. All right, this is going to be a three-parter because apparently you can only put in so many characters. Okay. Jennifer, recently bought an autographed Boys Like Girls CD at Goodwill for $1.99. The last two sales of the same autographed CD sold for $100 each. I checked the CD and it has a uh, some scratches and skips. Should I list it as it is? And if so, should I use the $100 price point or mark it lower due to scratches? Or should I try to find a better copy of the CD before listing it? and switch it out, I could probably find one online for around $4. Okay. If you can find a CD for $4, absolutely. Go get a fresh one and switch it out. If not, if it was a little bit more expensive, it, unless you live in a dark corner of Montana, most populated towns and cities have CD stores and game stores. And all those stores have refurbishing machines. And usually you can bring in your games and CDs. And like here in Vegas, Zia Records, two bucks. Two bucks to fix your scratch CD because that CD is worth a hell of a lot more autographed and playable than autographed and scratched. So for sure, either buy one and flip it out, make sure you buy the exact same one, make sure, or have it fixed. Because if you don't have it fixed, you're, yes, you're going to lose some money. Very good. Stephanie, do you wish you would have stepped up your game hiring a team sooner? So it took me a while, but there was like three years that went by that at the end of the year, I go, huh, I didn't do any better. Every year I sold the exact same amount, like almost to the penny. It was nuts. Yeah. And then I thought, huh, I still got stuff to list. Oh, if I had some help. But uh, Stephanie, Stephanie and I are, are newer friends, um, but I have had a team. Usually it's a one person team. Lately it's been a two person team. I've had a team for about 10 years now, I think. Wow. About 10 years. So, yeah. But those those couple of years leading up to the last the 10 years, I was like, how do I make more money? Some more stuff. Oh, I got to hire somebody. So, yeah, it's definitely something you should start right away. And like I said, if nothing else, hire the teenage kid that lives next door to come on a Saturday for like four hours and knock out a ton of pictures. They can listen to whatever music they want to. All you need to do is teach them how to take pictures. Good answer. Tina. Hi, Tina. I'm at 3,500. Do I need to move up in store size? Well, Tina, what part of this equation did you not tell us? <laughs> <laughs> what store are you in? Can't answer that question until I know that. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if she's in a premium. 
excuse me. Okay, Ned, do you think it's possible to get Stephanie to move from rainy, hot, sticky to dry, hot, not rainy? So so Ned and, and, and Stephanie and their daughter live in Orlando. Uh, her job disappeared because of COVID, sadly. And uh, I would love them to come here because what she does, there could be some jobs here. Yes. And uh, she's not a big fan of Florida. And I'm like, yes, come here. So Ned, I will do my damnedest to help because I would love to have you guys here and hang out with you guys. Yeah, we can see you too when we come visit Vegas. Yes, absolutely. Plus, uh, most people don't know this. We do have seasons. People don't believe it. There is a ski resort in Las Vegas with actual snow and actual skiing. Most people don't know that. So if you want the season, all you got to do is drive up the mountain a little bit. And let me tell you, I was staying with Stacey and Jason once, and he didn't turn the heat on. I had to go to the thrift store and buy a sweatshirt. I was freezing. <laughs> yeah, we're not big on heat, are we, honey? I think it was January, and I'm like, I, I'm too cold. <laughs> and there's Steph. Yay. <laughs> and you do get rain. Yes. Okay, Jeff Smith, how do you use sales and online coupons with eBay to boost your sales, and what methods have been the most successful? Thank you. Uh, I use quite a bit uh, uh, Markdown Manager. Is that what it's called? I don't know what it's called anymore. But I put my whole store on sale. Like this week is on sale 15%. Last week was on sale 20%. And sometimes when I have a few extra moments, I'll go in and do a 50% off on all my oldest stuff. And then like 18% uh, on the rest of it. With the new uh, We Can Send coupons, which we're going to talk about coming up. I'll be using that too. And I do use promoted listings. Now, I have goals every month. If I've hit my goal and I'm happy... I don't mind that I sell more in the month, but I'll probably turn off my promoted listings, turn off my sale. Like I'm good. I've hit my goal. I've, I've, mm. I've crushed my goal. And I'm like, all right, the last three days, I don't need to give any more fees. I'll turn it off. And then the new month starts and I'll start again. That might sound stupid, but it works for me. We just did uh, two weeks, 20% off. And I think we sold about $124. Oh, we just sold something. <laughs> uh, we have beaches, Nadine, at the casinos. And you're only three and a half hours from the beach, uh, the Pacific Ocean. So, hello. Yeah. And Disneyland's only four hours away from you. Yep. Place to live. And you don't have, oh, yeah, you do have, uh, you don't have state income tax, right? No state income tax. So, if you have a job that you can move here and still have the job, it's an instant raise because there's no state income tax. Well, I'm tempted, boy. I'm telling you. Okay. Esther, did you ever post the picture we took of Antiki? I may have missed it. I didn't. There it is. So oh. Esther, Esther, what did Esther call me? A jerk? Uh, okay. uh, jerk? Esther called me a name by kind of by accident, and we laughed about it. And I said, hey, if I'm ever in your neck of the woods, let's get a tiki drink. And then I was like three days later. And so this is Esther and then me and then her husband's in the white polo. And my our buddy Ron is in the black T-shirt. So uh, hi, Esther. Yes, I never posted. I'll post it in the group. But here it is. We went and got drinks after she called me an idiot. <laughs> Looks fun. It was all for fun. Yes. Yes. No hurricanes. There, there's no natural disasters in Nevada. None. Although one of the casino, what the roof of Senior Frog crashed. What are, you had a rainstorm a couple of years ago. Remember the roof came down. Uh, the Senior. Well, yeah, but that's not a natural disaster. That's poor. Well, it was for the death. people that were in it. <laughs> Okay. Oh, Tina has. I don't know what seventy four a month is. You got to tell me the level, Tina. Are you? I, I don't know the price on the top of my head. Are you a pre? Are you at a premium store or I, a is that a pre no? Because premium is fifty nine ninety nine a month. Yeah, yeah, that's what I have. Fifty nine. Oh, seventy four a month. I don't but know but uh, we we can talk, Tina. Yeah. Okay, Carol. What's your favorite color? Purple. And uh, Elisa, Jason, did you ever pick up the Disney Tiki painting? Oh, from down no. Not yet. Not yet. We're, we're getting there. He's waiting. He's all vaccinated. When they can travel, it's all packed in our spare room. Okay, BL, what is the airspeed velocity of a un and la unladen swallow? It's 24 miles an hour or 11 miles per second. Uh, 11 meters per second, sorry. It's an unladen swallow. I love when people come up with the funny ones. Yeah, I do too. No, we aim to teach. <laughs> I care about the natural disaster. <laughs> okay, Emily, uh, what's your favorite tattoo you have and why? Weirdest place you found a great deal on a tiki mug? Okay, so favorite tattoo is this one right here because it's the same one on Stacy's back. Oh. So I had that done when we were filming season two of Thrift Hunters. So it was kind of like my Carol Burnett tugging on the ear. So when Stacy would see this on the show, she, that was me saying, hi, honey. 
Oh, I love you guys. <laughs> and then the weirdest place I ever found a tiki mug. Oops. Well, here's Amoeba Records in Hollywood, the biggest record store in the world. This was the original location. It just moved. And there's a limited edition Pixar crew tiki mug sitting in the display case, which is usually rare CDs. I bought it. As you can see, I paid $175 for it. It was a couple years ago. And now it sells for somewhere between $400 and $300. Oh, nice. That's cool. Because I had them backwards. That's why I didn't say it. Nice. Now we got to find one of those in the wild. You too could find one of these. <laughs> I did not see your movie question. Uh, okay, Susan, why do you leave the price tags on many of the CDs you list? I don't. <laughs> when I show you guys, it is to show you what I paid and then what it sold for. The second after I take the picture, I put a fresh case on and it goes bye-bye. Yeah, it, it does seem to us that, you, that you're doing it wrong. <laughs> yeah, I am for sure not selling a $100 Mickey Cat CD and sending it with the $1.99 saver sticker. Oh, that would not be good. Okay. Marco723, a cobra snake or Celine Dion's neck, which is more terrifying? Oh, Celine Dion's neck, 100% of the time. <laughs> that is frightening. And Elisa, if you send me another damn picture of her neck, we're not friends no more. You're out of the group, girl. Okay, Sue, what is the process to scan DVDs and LPs in thrift stores? You talk about it, but what do I need to do it? Need to do it? Uh, you, just, you need, where is it? Oh. <laughs> You need your phone and you need uh, three apps, eBay, Amazon, Discogs. And those all three have scanners and then you can scan the barcodes. I can show you what, what the listing prices are on Amazon, eBay, and Discogs. And then eBay and Discogs, you also can switch over to the solds too. So easy these days. Remember we yep. started thrifting way back in the day? Yep. We didn't have none of this. Thank goodness for technology. Okay, Nate. Oh, it's a movie made of your life. What genre would would it be, and who would you who would play you? Oh, I don't even know if I want to hear this. Well, J yeah, Stacey said Jason Momoa, of course, <laughs> and for sure it would be a western. Come on now. Yes, I love western. <laughs> there be. <laughs> Stacey just said it sounds like the worst movie ever. Look, look at her laughing at her own joke. <laughs> <laughs> she has made herself giggle. Love it. Okay, Scott, when listing the CD, how do you get the information to populate into the listing? I always check the box, but nothing ever shows up. I have no idea what's going on, Scott. I think eBay is effed because, yes, I can't get the information in anymore right now either. And I just haven't had time to ask them. But yeah, something's wrong. Something's very, very wrong for our CD sellers to get the information that they give us to put in the listing. So, yeah. We're going to have to work on that, Scott. So message me and let's then let's contact eBay for business together. And we'll say, we'll say what the F. So you're talking about the catalog, the Muse catalog. Where yeah, it's you, when there. you scan in the barcode from home, when you're on the computer to sell it, it says, oh, this CD, you check it off. And it's supposed to give you all the details. But lately it's been a hot mess. And sometimes they're wrong. So you always have to double check what you're getting to. Yep. Okay, Kathy, what is the real reason that you wear that tiki ne necklace if you remember the one I'm talking about? Oh, do tell. So it wasn't a tiki necklace. It's actually this one right here. Oh, the robot guy. I have one of those, a mini. <laughs> Hang on. Let me get Stacy back on. She said, holy hell. So, Thanks, yeah, so uh, Chris Green got me this necklace and I had it on and everyone came up, uh, mainly women, and, and touched it and played with it. And I figured out one day, when it's, and I had it on a little bit longer of a chain. I'm 6'5". The average height woman, when she walks past me, her eye level was this cool little articulated robot. So I just have to stand there and just strangers would walk up and start playing with my necklace. So You met a lot of people that way. I sure did. Okay, Elisa, looking for people to chip in for a full-size standing cardboard standing to send to Jason. 50 bucks on Amazon. Okay, we will never five. do anything together ever, Elisa. I will hate you forever. <laughs> I will hate you. I got you covered. <laughs> okay, my friend Carol and CJ, we're Disneyland partners. Do you miss eBay Radio? I do. I don't. You don't? No. Nope. Do, do you want to talk about it? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, Lee's a piece of shit, so no, I don't miss Ooh, it. Hello. Oh, wow. Okay. Next. 
Okay, Heidi. Jason, did Stacy ask you out for it first for a date, or was it you who asked her out first? <laughs> Why is that funny, honey? Of course, I didn't ask you. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, I know the story. So I'll do the quick version because we're already you know, we're already a minute, an hour and a half, and uh, and we got uh, like ten more to go. Okay. Um, uh, she was uh, drunk at my dad's bar, as was her girlfriend. And I was planning on hitting on her girlfriend until her girlfriend started puking. And I'm like, mm. I, and I was working. I'm like, mm, not hitting on pukey girl. Who's a cute brunette standing next to her? And that was the third week of August in 1990. And we're still together. Aww. So uh, that next night, I ran down to my dad's club where I worked. And I left her a message on her voicemail. You want to tell the dorky message I left? Since you love to share this part of the story. Uh, it's uh, 3.17 p.m. And I'm on my way down to the bar. So hopefully we uh, can see, I can see you later. 317. Who says that? <laughs> so we went out for dinner that night and uh, I uh, uh, thoroughly uh, scored her by sticking an entire egg roll in my mouth. Just as the waitress was walking up to the table. <laughs> this is all yours, baby. Stacy. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. Yeah. Married up, Stacy. Donald, during 2008, during the recession, was it tough making sales? So I was actually working the job. I, I've always sold online for 21 straight years. But but during that time, the sell online was a side gig, not a full-time gig. So I was still selling, but I don't have a big memory of it because I had a full-time job. I, I was, uh, my buddy owned a hot tub store, so I was selling and installing hot tubs. And so... That wasn't really on my brain, but I do. I did sell. I, I had to ship every morning before I went to work, but I just don't really remember. Was it amazing or was it rough? I don't really remember. Okay. Come on. And uh, Miss Clayton, why don't I think that's Miss? Anyway, that's my maiden name. Why don't you do more shows with your TV sidekick? Uh, because he's a big old waste of space. And. Uh, he uh, caused all kinds of problems for me and for the TV production, including, I don't know if I've ever said this uh, publicly, but uh, if we would have made it to season three, he wasn't making it. He was, he was getting recast. Okay. Do you know who it was going to be? Or did they ever Well, say? they asked me to give him five names of someone who could replace him. Oh. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Brian likes the idea of being on the show and, and having Facebook groups, but when it came time to the actual work, that wasn't Brian. Brian is not a hustler. Never hustled a day in his life. Would rather just take a nap. As much as I love naps, work's got to get done first. And then you can take a nap. Are he would nap take a nap and then take another nap. So that's why I don't do nothing with him. He 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 got the accolades for what we built, but didn't do any of it. And I got tired of someone else getting accolades off of my hard work. And so that's so why I, I went it alone. Smart. Okay, Denise. Um, ask Jason to show his map and cheat sheet for shipping, everything for a dummy to ship. I do fine on shipping, but I feel there's a better ways of doing things. Thank you. This, a, Is there another part to that? Lot, yeah. Uh, uh, ask him, if not, I always want to do a video of you thrifting in a, th a record store. I told... I told her you probably don't have time. Oh, that was me. I said you, you probably don't have time to do it, but we'll do it um, another time maybe. Maybe next time when you go thrifting uh, to a record store. Okay, so about your shipping, your cheat sheet for shipping, you need to know what zone you're in, really. <clears throat> and uh, uh, I have a cheat sheet for just the weights, but just Google it. And you can Google your images uh, of the zones shipping. So this picture right here, is for someone who lives in LA, which still would work for me. So the blue is zone one, means the closest, cheapest. And that fleshy color on the right is zone eight, means the most expensive. So this won't be for you unless you're in the LA, Vegas, San Diego area. But you can figure out, uh, you go to usps.com and, and you can figure out where you're at, where your zones are. So you need to know. You need to know what's close to you and you know what's far from you and how, how far your range. Now, I luck out. Living in Vegas, I have all of like Phoenix and Los Angeles and San Diego and San Francisco. I have so many millions of people. If someone lives in Minneapolis, they don't have that as many people. I lucked out. I live in a corner of the world, the United States, where there's a ton of people. So uh, you East Coasters, you got kind of that same luck too. So 
Um, you got to know where you live and where your zones are. So start there. Google that and figure out where your zones are. And then you've got to figure out what the furthest point is. So for your things that are heavy and odd shaped, you figure out to the furthest point. If it comes in at a close point, you either made a couple extra dollars on shipping or you do a little refund. And do you you recommend calculated shipping anyway, right? So you no, put what? Your have you ever met? Have, st um, say that again, Stace. What? Have you ever met me? Have you ever taken any of my webinars? <laughs> I have never used calculated shipping once in 21 years. <laughs> oh, well, we use it. Sometimes. No, I know my weights. I'm trying to break you guys of that habit too. If you if you look at all your items as bricks of weight, you don't have to know do calculated shipping because calculated shipping is a pain in the butt because you have to weigh and measure everything beforehand. Yeah. Once you do a pair of jeans, they're all the same after that. Oh well, yeah, I I've shipped those in padded flat rate envelopes. Right, but you don't have to do a calculator with those. No, not okay. for those. not for those. And you finally got us on international where it's you know because we use your cheat sheet from your pirate for pirate ship on that one too. Okay, Marissa, did you ever explain the mysterious adventure that you and Stacy were planning? Did I miss it? Not yet. COVID keeps pushing things back. Stay tuned. Okay. <laughs> That's all I can say for now. All righty. April, uh, April, May. How in the bazigas do I uh, buff up eBay description window with a template or graphics or cute, cool, weird theme to make it look nice and to make it easier to format and put info in is there an app for that? You don't want mm -hmm. you don't want any Foo -foo. foofing up. No templates, no graphics. You just want the facts, and that's it. Because not everyone's rocking an iPhone 12 Pro Max. There are plenty of people who are on a six still. So if you've got templates and stuff, it slows it down. Let me show you. Uh, let me show you the my description in my last. Uh, I, I sold a woman's jacket earlier today. That's kind of old. That was old school. Putting oh, all hang that on. Out. I'm going to skip that one because I sold it on a foreign eBay and it looks a little funky. Uh, how about the CD from Paul Abdul? What? Okay, here it is. There ain't no foofiness. Three versions. Seven inch LP version, dub mix. Doesn't have the front insert. That's my whole description. That's it. Just the facts, ma'am. Sweet and to the point. Don't need nothing else. Keep it simple, stupid. Absolutely. Yes, people yep, don't. Your product is a star. No foof needed. <laughs> yep, waste of time. Okay, so I'm I'm a little I'm a little confused by this one. David, I remember when you did the TV show Thrift Hunters, you seemed to buy lots of CDs. How do you know what is collectible when all you find are Christmas CDs? I don't understand the last part of that because I definitely don't find just all Christmases. Hey, we go. Oh, well, there's plenty. Of... Turn the lights onto that shelf. All... There's plenty of Christmas CDs that are, are good too, but I find all kinds of good CDs. Here's here's my ones for sale on Amazon right now. Yep. Okay. So um, I still buy a ton of CDs. A ton of CDs still sell. I, I share four with you guys every single week. And if you've not taken my classes yet at uh, jasonthrifts.com, what are you waiting for? I want to teach you how to make extra, 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 extra money. What are you waiting for? Yeah, you have a, you share more non-Christmas, it seems like, but there is money in Christmas. Yeah, so you can go right up here to jasonthrifts.com, go to my classes. There's flipping cassettes. There's my tiki class, flipping CDs, okay? All kinds of classes, but you definitely want the media ones. Because everywhere we go, there's media. Every single place we go, there's media. Even at the Friends of the Library book sales. Exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a lot of Christmas CDs. Okay, Leanne, what was the lowest priced item you ever sold online? Not at a garage sale. What was the item, price it sold for, and on what platform? And why did you sell it so low? I know more. I don't know if there's more to that. I'm, I know more than one question, but inquiring minds want to know. Oh, so I used to buy back in the early days. I would buy, you know, people were getting out of VHS and going to DVD. So I buy their whole VHS collection. And then people were getting out of cassettes and going to CDs. And then people got out of cassettes and went to, uh, you know, iTunes. And so I buy whole collections, but I would sell everything $20 CDs and $3 CDs. And one day I'm like, 
why in the hell am I wasting time selling $3 CDs? Because it's the same amount of work as a $20 CD, but at the end, I maybe have a dollar profit, maybe 50 cents. And I'm like, what a waste of absolute time. So, so uh, Leanne, I had to sell a lot of $3 CDs to realize why the hell am I doing that? So I got, I got rid of that. I said, for the most part, nothing under 15 bucks CD wise. And I'll go down to 10. If I do buy a collection, there's a bunch of tens in there because they're quick to list, but no more $3. No more. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, by the time those fees hit you, ah. Ouch. And we don't really need lost, what do you call them, lost lo losers? Lost leaders. <laughs> lost now, leaders. Where that changes is, say you're newish, or say you get a negative or two, or you have some bad metrics all of a sudden, go buy a CD collection and sell a shit ton of $3 CDs because they'll be quick. And then your percentages will get fixed very quickly. But that's really the only time to do it when you need to fix your percentages. Or if you're new, you just need some sales under your belt. Yeah, do some loss leaders. Yeah. Okay, Renee, have you and Stacy ever attended Arizona Tiki Oasis? I'll put Stacy on here. Have we ever attended Stace? Uh, not as of this week. Okay, so <laughs> as of next week, the answer is so here is Tiki Oasis, Arizona. It is next week. Uh, let's look at the seminar. The first one of the day on Friday, Hotel Valley Ho Magical History Tour with Ace Bailey. The next one is Fashion and Travel from the Golden Age of Transportation with Dave Temple. Oh, who's doing the third web uh, seminar of the day? Me. Yeah, can't spell Beachcomber without M-O-B. So I'm talking all about down the Beachcomber and how they built the company by enlisting the Chicago mob. So yes, I've never been, but next week I'll be there. So if you're coming to Arizona for Tiki Oasis, please come see me at noon on Friday. I have an amazing presentation, one like you've never heard. And a lot of the things that people think they know about Down the Beachcomber, based on the books that all Tiki uh, fans have read, all those books are wrong. 100% of them are wrong. I know that because those books that I have are the business ledgers. I'm going to be one right here because I'm working on my presentation. Are the business ledgers for Don the Beachcomber, the company in Chicago? So I have all the papers when he signed his name, when he got divorced, when the mob showed up, all that stuff. So if you're in going to Oasis, come check it out. Cool. Uh, yeah, you have to buy tickets. See, see, buy tickets. Now, some passes you can automatically get in, and some passes you need to buy tickets. So if you're coming, make sure you know. Good point. All right, we got like four more, and then we are out of here. These have been fun. I'm even learning a lot. Okay, John, what's your white whale of thrifting, the one item you have yet to find in the wild? So I took this as, and I saw people talking about it today, I took this as things to flip. And some people were talking about their white whale of the things they want to find themselves. And I'm like, ah, I kind of answer that with the tiki mug I'm looking for. So the things that you all find, oh, <laughs> that was a rum barrel burp. <laughs> and then I have never found, I have never found the scrubbing bubble shower thingy. Me either. All right, chat. How many have found this? Because I know it's one y'all find. I have never, ever seen one. Ever. Nope. Me neither. And, and I have never found St. John. Now, I've seen it at estate sales, but priced way too high. So it's been in my grasp, but the price wasn't right. Yeah. All right. So Lori's never found it. Brian's found one. Tina's not found it. Cajun's got two. Woo! Scott found sold. Angelique. All right. I don't feel so bad. But if you didn't know, St. John as a brand and Scrubbing Bubbles, the automatic shower thing, those are huge, huge bolos that I have never found. Every time you guys find them, I'm happy for you, but I'm also sad. And it's crazy because there's a lot of St. John's. It's not just this one outfit. There's all kinds of them. And I've never seen one. Okay. I'm putting you on the air for a second. I got to see you really bad. Okay. So Stacy's going to talk. Okay. Hi, Stacy. Ask Stacy anything. Okay. What's Jason's favorite meal for dinner that you hate to cook? Oh, wait, you're, mu you're muted. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Tap the, tap the top. Is it working? No. <laughs> he gives you a dead mic. <laughs> oh, sheesh. Okay. Ask Stacy anything. Wink, wink. <laughs> uh, well, I would say Jason's favorite food is pizza. 
pizza. Okay. Uh, he does like uh, his mother's meatloaf. So I make a different version. So he likes meatloaf. Mm -hmm. I can do that. Okay. Um, pork chops. Oh, okay. He, he makes those. I don't make those. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Wow. Okay. Very simple. Very simple foods. Yeah. Anybody no. have any other questions? Uh, let's see. What else can I ask you? Um, oh, would I like to see the beard gone? You know, I don't, that would be so weird, I think, because he's always had hair somewhere. So before he had the beard, he had the hair and then started shaving that. Yeah, so, but he had, it wasn't like shave shaved. So if he had no hair anywhere, I don't know. I think that'd be a little weird. Whoa! But let's, <laughs> but let's try it. What? Shave your beard <laughs> to, see if, to see if I like it. Nope. That's the only way I'll know if it, if it actually happens. <laughs> All right. I'll do, I'll, I'll do half one day. Oh gosh. Or right, down <laughs> the, right down the middle. Uh. <laughs> Okay, Tina, does he do or help with any housekeeping? I've been there when we're all housekeeping together. All right. What are you doing? <laughs> so uh, he will do housekeeping when we're having a party and he has to clean up his mess. Yeah, I've witnessed uh, that. He did unload two thirds of the dishwasher today and then somehow left some of it for me. <laughs> He'll do the dishes. Um, what else do you do? I mow the lawn. So, yeah, not oh. much. Well, not much cleaning. This question is for you. Oh, what is it? What is your favorite thing that you have found thrifting? And what is your favorite thing that Jason has gifted you? I don't know if I necessarily have a favorite thing thrifting just because I'm like kind of. I just like do what I'm told. And what I mean by that is like, I know what to look for and I know if something's worth some money, then I'm like, woo. So like with the CDs and stuff, that's like, I just like being able to help him find stuff to sell and make money. But um, as far as the favorite thing he's given me, I got a lot. So uh, I, I'm not wearing it right now, but he gave me a customized, uh, uh, well, is it an engagement ring? Still I don't know. diamond ring. That's like an engagement ring that has our signature Tiki on it holding the diamond. So that's obviously one of a kind and very special. He also had a black velvet painting made of us. Uh, so it's like those unique things because obviously I don't need it. Uh, but it's when he puts those extra creativity uh, juices flowing. That's uh, those are the fun things. Nice. I could go on and on. Oh, yes. Next time it's gonna be Ask Stacy anything. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Joel, who is the biggest celebrity mu musician you've met and who would you like to meet but haven't yet? Are you an autograph collector? Who is the most famous person you are friends with? So I worked at Tower in Hollywood. So, and I started Tower in Westwood, which is UCLA area. So here are some of the people that I helped over the, the uh, year and a half I worked there. Burt Reynolds, Scary Spice, Don, I helped Don Henley pick out box sets. I helped uh, Paul Stanley. He was wearing Adidas track pants, a T-shirt, and a ball cap. It totally ruined my perception of Paul Stanley. <laughs> uh, we met uh, Dave Grohl at an airport. Wow. Uh, uh, this was the only real jerk I ever had to deal with when I was working at Tower. Oh, sad. Yeah. And B.B. King was so fun because he was buying his own box sets. It was kind of weird. Oh. <laughs> as, far, as far as... Who did I have not met yet? Ginger. No. I never ever got to meet her. Now, as far as, far as who's the most famous person I am friends with, the Coliseum is where we used to go to concerts in Cleveland. So here is a flyer from 1984. Yeah, 84. Thursday night, November 29th. It was Quiet Riot, White Snake, and Armored Saint. I was 13 years old, just about to be 14. My buddy's mom took me and, uh, and, and obviously her son and four other friends. And all these years later, so that's the guitar player from Quiet Riot. That's Carlos Cavazzo. All these years later, we have become friends. Aww. And so that is Vicky Cavazzo, his wife, who put the question in earlier. The friendship started with Vicky. She reached out to me on social media. We started chatting. And she was talking about her husband, Carlos. And I saw her last name and I'm like, is your husband Carlos from Quiet Riot? 
And she said, yeah. So this is us coming out of dinner one night in North Hollywood. So uh, uh, a great couple. And then people we became just friends with as kind of COVID struck. So we had spent a couple, uh, we spent one night when Carlos was doing a show at the Hollywood A-Go-Go. Whiskey A-Go-Go. Whiskey A-Go-Go. And then went out to dinner and we talk a lot online. Uh, but now with uh, you know vaccines and stuff, we'll get to hang out more. So, yeah we, yeah, we owe them dinner. They they picked up our dinner tab last time. Now it's our turn. So nice. So I'm very excited. Uh, my 13 year old self is very giddy when we hang out. And I told him, I said, look, I'm just gonna straight up tell you, I saw you when I was 13, and you were my first metal show, and uh, been a fan ever since. So the fact that we've now become friends, pretty fucking awesome. So that is that is really cool. Yeah. So you never know. Look. If I didn't start thrifting, if I didn't have my show, if I didn't become friends with like Debbie and stuff, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have met Carlos. I wouldn't have met, I wouldn't have met you, Deb. So, you know, although there've been hiccups along the way, I'm so happy where I'm at because of the great people who are in the chat right now, the great people that I'm friends with, hanging out with Debbie. So, you know, life takes you in weird circles sometimes and sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. But when you get yeah, to the end, you look back at all the good and really focus on that. Oh yeah, way more nice, great people out there. Like me, I go to Tennessee to hang out with my brother, and Tina lives there, so we go to a state cell together. We have eBay friends everywhere. Yep. Okay, Rose, what are what are a few reasons you picked Henderson over other areas of Vegas, like Summerlin, R and D, Tucson versus Las Vegas for retirement? I want Las Vegas. Okay, mm -hmm. so there's only one reason. Stacy's office was 3.4 miles from the house we live in. <laughs> That's sense. the reason. Now she doesn't work there no more, but she worked there for how many years? Well, 16, altogether. 16 years. So her commute was 3.4 miles. Yeah. yeah. You can so, see it from uh, the back window. They're back upstairs. Bedroom. Yeah, yeah. I, it, because the Vegas goes up a mountain, out our back, we can see where Stace works right out our back. So uh, that that's the that's the reason. And yeah, for retirement, Tucson or Las Vegas, Las Vegas wins 100 out of 100 times. Oh, yeah. All the entertainment and all the people come in. You have so many friends because people fly into Vegas to, for entertainment and everything, and you get to hang out with them. Yeah. Okay, David, why does the porridge bird lay its eggs in the air? Whoa. Well, look, David, it's a common misconception that the porridge bird lays its eggs in the air. Certainly, each spring, great flocks of porridge birds swarm the Belgian countryside, rain down porridge, custard, and extreme cases, yogurt upon unsuspecting passerbys. Understandably, this has given rise to the idea that the porridge birds lay their eggs in mid-flight, which then hatch and cover the surround area in the aforementioned mess. The fact of the matter is, however, the porridge bird lays its eggs in a small nest. Oh, thank goodness. I'm imagining dead bird slop splattered everywhere. <laughs> That was good. Did I read that, did I read that pretty well? Did it look, did it look yeah. like <laughs> you, you should be the host for that uh, Jeopardy show. You could be a host for a week. Brian, don't give away the secrets. <laughs> you don't show the man behind the curtain. <laughs> Face, do you work now? Yes. Okay. It's all we'll say for now. <laughs> all right. Last question. Here we go. Okay, Scott, what was your biggest sell ever or your biggest bolo, such as a specific item that was sold for a large R ROI each time you sold it? Okay, so biggest sale is this watch right here that was my mom's. That's beautiful. I sold this watch for $15,000, and it was back in March of 2011. And did so you use escrow for that? Use escrow, use escrow for that. And then as far as a bolo goes, and this is a good one that anyone can write down right now, wherever you live, if you have a record store near you, not Vegas, because I've gotten them all, and not LA, not Phoenix and LA, because I've gotten them all there too. Any other city <laughs> uh, is this Prince box set. It came out a couple years ago, but uh, it was a special version of 1999. It's five CDs and one DVD, actually. I have my own personal copy right here. It looks like this. So there's all the discs. Okay. Uh, so it went out of print, but the record stores never changed their price. So you can pick this up for 70 bucks at the record store where most people be like, I'm not paying 70 bucks. But look, I sold for 190 over and over and over. I sold three now for 190. So I'll absolutely pay $70 to sell it for 190. Absolutely. Yes. So go to your local record store. 
I tell my mom and dad this all the time. They never do. And then, and then someone on the thrifting board posted they found one in Cleveland at the record store in Solon, which is near where they live. Uh -oh. And so they could have had that one. So if you live near a record store, just go in, go to the print section. Every record store has a print section and see if they have the 1999 CD box set. And if they carry vinyl, if they happen to have the 10 vinyl, the 10 disc vinyl box set, it's worth even more. That sells for like four or $500. Wow. You wow. can even call, be lazy, just call. Yeah. Hey, 99, 1999 CD box set or vinyl box set. So there you go. There's a constant bolo that I keep finding and I keep selling and I keep making money on. And that's easy to remember the cover. You know, you look at that. And yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to point out that was Stacy's wrist with that $15,000 watch on it. Yeah. That's cool that it was too. So I want to thank everybody. Look, we still got like 150 people two hours in. Uh, I knew it was be a long show. I didn't think we'd hit the two-hour mark, but we did. But it was a ton of fun. So yeah. thank you for the questions ahead of time. Thank you for the questions during the show. Thank you for making my making my Thursday nights fun and my Sunday nights fun. Uh, I love all you guys. I, I very much do this because I love being part of your journey, and I love seeing your successes. And so I, I, that's why I'm going to give you this uh, Las Vegas honey hole next week because, A, I'm going to help my friends out. But, B, anybody who lives in Vegas or comes to Vegas, I'm going to give you the secret to where the honey hole is that no one ever, ever, ever sees. And there will be never any day where you're driving past it just because it's kind of it's kind of hidden. How long have you known about this honey pot? Uh, you know, it's, it's funny. My bad. I forget to go, too, even though I know where it is. And so my friend said, look. We, you know, I've been a few times. Um, we get a ton of great stuff. We need more foot traffic. Jason, can you help us? Oh, yeah. So I went over there. I said, Oh, yeah, I found that kick ass dress and a few other things. So I'll be doing about a 10 minute video next week of the store, what I found in a quick check, what they've got, and where it is, where to find it. So, because all this time you've never told me when we've been there. I know. <laughs> okay. I forgive you. All right. So, yeah, if you have not given us a thumbs up yet, please do. We had a bunch of trolls watching us last week. Are they here tonight? Did you enjoy? Yeah. Did you get the answers that you wanted? This when is I, good. When I talked about uh, stalkers, are you one of them? <laughs> All right. So it. give us a big old thumbs up down there. Thank you, Debbie, very much. This was fun. And uh, subscribe right there. Click the bell. And a big thanks to this lovely lady right here. Yay. For many reasons. The most recent for this kick-ass rum barrel. <laughs> And just for loving me. So thanks, baby. And for being so fun. You are so fun. Yep. All right. So don't forget, no Thursday show next week because I'll be in Arizona getting ready to give my speech. Uh, but Sunday this week and then Saturday this week. So don't forget, we got all kinds of stuff coming up. So stay tuned to all my channels. I'll be posting the link for Saturday night, tonight or tomorrow. And then Sunday will be up too. So all kinds of great stuff this weekend. And then Secret Beachcombers, I'll see you tomorrow night with Matchbooks. Yay, can't wait. Ooh. Thanks, Deb and Debbie. Thank you for getting everything together. Good job. Yeah. Um, thanks for all the questions everybody gave. They were great. Yes. And now I'm exhausted. Have a good evening, everybody. Okay. Good night.